this morning I want to go over um, the secret, the mystery of Jehovah. As written in Revelation 10 verse 7. And I'm going to read this in a couple of different uh, translations. And as I pointed out before, one must be careful translating as not to shade the meaning of a particular word differently than what John said. So we'll start in King James Version once again, like I've done before with this very verse. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of Jehovah should be finished, or as it should be rendered, translated carefully as fulfilled. As he has declared to his servants the prophets. Which prophets? I'm going to do a little rundown of the prophets that he is speaking of. <clears throat> it would be Moses. It would be David. Micah. Zephaniah. Isaiah, Jeremiah, once again, David in the book of Psalms, Isaiah, twice now, Ezekiel, Hosea, um, Nehemiah, well, several times for each of the, uh, so many times for Ezekiel especially, just so many times. Zechariah, all right. I will go over these particular passages one by one in just a minute. But what I want to do is look at the Good News translation of Revelation 10 and verse 7. And this is the best translation of Revelation 10, verse 7 that I have ever seen. So let's go over this carefully. When the seventh angel blows his trumpet, then Jehovah will accomplish his secret plan as he announced to his servants the prophets. So what secret plan did he announced to his servants the prophets. We will start in the book of Psalm. Oh. <clears throat> it would be Psalm 25 and verse 14. This is a Psalm of David, folks. Let's we'll start in verse 12. What man is he that fears Jehovah? Him. He, Jehovah, will teach in the way that he will choose. At a point of time. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the Eretz, the land. The land of what? The land of Israel. Verse 14, the secret of Jehovah is with them that fear him. Now he's describing the secret. And he will show him, show them his covenant. All right, the covenant. Which covenant? Okay. 
What I'm going to say right now will probably make everyone angry, but it is the truth. It is the covenant, the new covenant, that as a nation, my people, the Jews, rejected in uh, just over 2,000 years ago. And it is also the new covenant that the Gentiles have rejected beginning in around the days of Constantine until now. Yet, yet, Gabriel told John by the word of above that in the days of the seventh trumpet, When the seventh trump angel blows his trumpet, then Jehovah will accomplish his secret plan as he announced to his servants the prophets. We just read in Psalm 25 what the secret plan is to institute the new covenant. Okay? To institute it. On who? On who is the new covenant going to be instituted? Read Jeremiah 31, verses 31 through 34. Maybe we should go and read that. For those of you who are new to this uh, YouTube channel, I guess it would be a good thing to go over this. And before you say... Or you say the prophets don't matter, as some of my former friends have told me. Don't, don't reject Revelation 10 verse 7, because he distinctly talks about the prophets. All right. So then, if the secret of Jehovah the is the covenant, as written in. Psalm 25, we just read. Let's look at that covenant. Let's look at the everlasting covenant. Jeremiah 31, verses 30, for 30, 30, verse 31. Behold, the days come, says Jehovah, that I will make a new covenant with the church. Is that what it says? Well, if people will say, well, of course... He would say the house of Israel and the house of Judah, because this is the Old Testament, you see, and this is the prophets, and the prophets don't matter anymore, is what I've been told by modern-day Christians. We'll go over this, and then we'll see what's written in, as they say, the New Testament. That I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, and with the house of Yehuda, those are the two kingdoms of Israel he's talking about. There's nowhere written in here that says the church, as people try to say the church is today. Verse 32, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which covenant they broke, although I was a husband to them, says Jehovah, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After, after what days? I keep talking about after those days. After the time of Jacob's trouble is finished. The time of Jacob's trouble began earlier, but officially it began 67 AD. The destruction of when the destruction of Jerusalem, the army surrounding Jerusalem. That was when the time of Jacob's trouble began. 
and the time of Jacob's trouble will officially end when the new covenant begins to be instituted upon the nation, the two sticks of Israel, the house of Israel and the house of Judah. After those days, after Israel's rejection is over with, once the 77s of Daniel 9 is complete, and I have proven using simple math, fifth grade math, that we are at that point. He says, I will put my law in their inward parts. This is a miracle. This is something that the people of Israel and Yehuda have no power over. No power over whatsoever. He's going to put it in them. And write it in their hearts and be their Elohim and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, No, Jehovah, for they shall all. Yeah, you see that word all there? Know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them saith Jehovah, for, and here is, why are they going to believe? Why are they going to know Jehovah? Why? Because I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. So this is different than the narrative that your Christian preachers teach you. You see, now, let's go to um, Hebrews 8, verses 8 through 12. Verse 7, For if that first covenant had been faultless, then no place should have been sought for the second. For finding fault with Israel... He said, Behold, day the days come, saith Jehovah, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Where in here does Paul mention the church, as they say? Hmm? Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them up by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, says Jehovah. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. Here we go with after those days again. After what days? Let me show you something. Here's another place. That says, after those days. We just went over it not long ago. Let's go this time to Mark 13, 24. It says, but in those days after that tribulation, after what tribulation? After Israel's tribulation that began in 67 AD. The sun and the, will be darkened and the moon will not shed its light. Right? And the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken, the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with great power and glory. And then, and it is written in another uh, 
chapter that the nations, the goyim, the heathen, the Gentiles are going to mourn. He shall send his angels and gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost parts of the earth, <coughs> from the uttermost parts of the sky. Now, so clearly, this is talking about the new covenant, gathering all Israel together. Now, so Revelation 10 verse 7 says, the mystery, the secret, as he announced to his servants, the prophets. Let's see what this secret is. This promise, a secret promise that he announced to his servants, the prophets. All right, Psalm 106, verse 47. Save us, O Jehovah, our Elohim, and gather us from among the nations. Micah 2, verse 12. Folks, please write each and every one of these verses down. This is the heart and the soul of the new covenant. This is the secret of Jehovah given to his servants, the prophets. Okay? This is the answer. Micah 2, verse 12. I will surely assemble you, all of you, Jacob. I will surely the gathering the remainder of Israel. The remnant, the last generation. I will put them together like sheep in the fold, like a flock in the midst of the pasture. They will be noisy with men. Zephaniah 3, verse 20. At that time, I will bring you in. Even at that time, when I gather you together, indeed, I will give you renown and praise among the Gentiles of the earth when I restore your fortunes. Before your eyes, says Jehovah. Now, this next one needs to be paid attention to. Very much so. In that day, Jehovah will begin his threshing. with the flowing stream of the Euphrates. All the way to the brook of Egypt. And you will be gathered up one by one, O sons of Israel. Jeremiah 31, verse 10. Hear the word of Jehovah, O nations, O Goyim, and declare this in the coastlands far, far away. And say, He who scattered Israel will gather him and keep him as a shepherd keeps his flock. Psalm 147, verse 2. Jehovah will build up Jerusalem and will gather the outcasts of Israel. Isaiah 56, verse 8. Jehovah Elohim, who gathers the dispersed of Israel, declares... Yet others will I gather to them, to those who are already gathered. In other words, just when you think that they have all been gathered, he's going to find a whole, all the lost ones. All the lost ones, not only the lost ones, but even Gentiles like Rahab and Ruth. Because it says he will uh, maneuver a second time to gather all Israel back. Is 
Ezekiel 39, verse 27. When I will bring them back from the peoples and gather them from the land of their enemies, then I shall be sanctified. What? How is Jehovah going to be sanctified? Hmm? In what way? When? All Israel is brought back to their land. That is how he's going to be sanctified. Through them in the sight of many goyim. Psalm 107, verses 2 and 3. Let the redeemed of Jehovah say, who he has redeemed from the hand of the adversary and gathered from the lands from the east. Yes, from the east happened in the late 1940s, folks. From the west, that started happening and is not near finished yet. From the north, that started happening and is not near finished yet. From the south, there are many of Israel in South Africa and Australia and places toward the south. Even in North Africa, many. Isaiah 54 and verse 7, For a brief moment I forsook you, but with great compassion will I gather you. Okay, let's talk about this verse for a second. He is making the latter part of this verse far, far greater than the first part. Now, the first part, we look back in history and we see that the forsaking of Israel was horrendous was astronomical, was incomprehensible. This is proof. Yet, yet he says, through his servant, the prophet Isaiah, in Isaiah 54 and verse 7, that the great compassion and his gathering of Israel is going to be like a mountain in comparison to when he forsook Israel. How about that for incomparable? How about that for unimaginable? How about that for a mind-blowing experience? Ezekiel 39, verse 28. Then they shall know that I am Jehovah their Elohim, because I made them go into exile among the nations, and then gathered them again into their own land, and will leave none, none of them. Not one. Not a large one, not a small one. There any longer. Hosea 8, verse 10, Even though they hire allies among the nations, now I will gather them up. Deuteronomy 3, in verse 30, This is Moses speaking. Then Jehovah your Elohim will restore you from captivity and have compassion on you and will gather you again from all the peoples where Jehovah your Elohim has scattered you. This is Moses again in the next verse. If your outcasts are at the ends of the earth, ends of the earth, that's United States, Canada, South America, Australia, etc. From there will Jehovah your Elohim gather you 
And from there, he will bring you back. Nehemiah 1 and verse 9. Though those of you who have been scattered were in the remote part, the most remote part of the heavens, in other words, the furthest part of north, south, east, and west, I will gather them from there and will bring them to the place where I have chosen to cause my name to dwell. And we talked about a second time, remember? Well, this is in... Isaiah 11, verses 11 through 12. It will happen on that day that Jehovah will again recover the second time with his hand the remnant of his people who remain from Assyria, Egypt, Pathros, uh, North Africa, Iran, Assyria, and Syria, Hamath, and from all the coastlands of the Mediterranean Sea. All of Europe, folks, all of North Africa, all of Europe. And he will lift up a standard, a flag, an order for the nations, for the goyim, and assemble the banished ones of Israel and will gather dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. From the four corners of the earth. Mark 13, verse 27. And then he shall send his angels and gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost parts of the earth, from the uttermost parts of the sky. The secret of Jehovah that he declared to his servants the prophets, I will continue. Jeremiah 29, verse 14, I will be found by you, declares Jehovah. What? That's right. So we have read, if with all your heart you truly seek me, you shall surely find me. We read here in Jeremiah 29, verse 14, it is a guarantee. It is a guarantee. He will be found by Israel, declares Jehovah. I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and from the, all the places where I have driven you, declares Jehovah. And I will bring you back to the place from where I sent you into exile. I'm telling you, folks, what the secret of Jehovah, the knowledge of the new covenant is. As he declared to his servants the prophets, this is what I am showing you today. I will continue. Behold, I will gather them out of all the lands to which I have driven them in my anger and in my wrath and in my great indignation, and I will bring them back to this place. And make them dwell in safety. Ezekiel 11 verse 17. Therefore, thus saith Jehovah Elohim, I will gather you from the peoples and assemble you out of the countries among which you have been scattered and will give you the land of Israel. Ezekiel 20, verse 34, I will bring you from the mount, uh, uh, from out of the peoples, and gather you from the lands where you are scattered with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with fury poured out. Ezekiel 20, verse 41, as a soothing aroma, I will accept you. I know the Christians today say, no, no, he won't. Don't argue with him. He says he will accept Israel and bring 
you out from the peoples, out from the nations, out from the Gentiles, and gather you from the lands where you are scattered, and I will prove myself holy among those, among you in the sight of the nations. So this is how he's going to prove that he is holy to the goyim, to the nations. Ezekiel 28, verse 25. Thus saith Jehovah Elohim, when I gather the house of Israel from among the peoples whom they are scattered and will manifest my holiness in them, in the sight of the nations, then, oh, then they will live in their land, which I gave to my servant Jacob. Ezekiel 34 and verse 13. I will bring them out of the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them to their own land and feed them on the mountains of Israel by the streams and in all the inhabited places of the land. Ezekiel 36 verse 24, For I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the lands and bring you into your own land. Ezekiel 37 21, Say to them, Thus saith Jehovah Elohim, Behold, I will take the sons of Israel from among the nations where they have gone, and I will gather them from every side, north, south, east, and west, and bring them into their own land. Zechariah 10, verse 10, I will bring them back from the land of Egypt, and gather them from Assyria, and I will bring them into the land of Gilead and Lebanon until there can be no more room found for them. Isaiah 43, verse 5. Are, are you tired of it yet? Are you tired of the new covenant yet? Christianity appears to be. I'm not. This is what I live for. I will continue. Isaiah 43, verse 5. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and gather you from the west. Jeremiah 31. Remember Jeremiah 31 where the new covenant is talked about. Jeremiah 31 verse 8. Behold, I am bringing them from the north country and I will gather them from the most remote parts of the earth. Among them, the blind, the lame, the woman with child, and she who is in labor with child, all together a great company shall return. Let us go once again to I will go to Luke 21, verses 25. First, Actually, let's go to Matthew 24 instead. And verse 31. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. All right, hold on. And they shall gather his elect from the four winds from one end of the heaven of heaven to the other. Revelation 10 verse 7. But when the seventh angel blows his trumpet, when then Jehovah will accomplish his secret plan as announced to his servants, the prophets. So what is that plan that he announced to his servants, the prophets? I dare you to say, you better not say anything except gathering all Israel from the four winds from one end of the sky to the other. That is the answer, folks. That is the secret of Jehovah. That is the knowledge of his covenant. That is the answer. That is the total and complete answer. Now, 
And Paul spoke about it just like Jeremiah did. So in the words of Paul, Galatians 1 verse 8. We'll start with verse 6. This is what happened to Christianity, folks. Paul couldn't believe his eyes while he was still alive. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of the Messiah to another gospel, to a different gospel. To a false gospel. He is already accusing the Galatians of switching gospels while he was yet alive. How much more so after he died? The rejection of the gospel, the rejection of the new covenant, as written, as Paul wrote. As Paul repeated from Jeremiah 31 through uh, verse 31 through 34, that Paul wrote in Hebrews 8, verse 8 through 12. That gospel, they removed themselves from that gospel and replaced it with another gospel. Paul accused the Galatians of doing this. And he cursed them for it. You ready? You don't believe it? He did. Let's read it again. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Messiah, not Christos, Messiah. See how replacement theology works, folks? Unto another gospel. And then he says, it is, what they're doing is, is a, perversion of the gospel. He says it's not another, another gospel, but it's a perversion of the gospel of Messiah. Of what Messiah? Of Israel's Messiah. So, he announces a curse upon them. You can look at it any way you want. But that's what happened. He put a curse on them. He says, But if we, or any angel of heaven, when he says we, he means him, the disciples, or even the angels of heaven, or anybody else, preaches to you any other gospel unto you than what we have preached to, to you, let him be accursed. Verse 9, as we have said before, so say I now again, if any man preach unto you any other gospel than what you have received, let him be accursed. So I tell you today, folks, the gospel that Paul preached is in Romans 11. Read all of it. The gospel that Paul preached is in Hebrews 8. Read all of it. Especially verses 8 through 12, which he took directly from Jeremiah the prophet. And then he said, if anyone preaches to you a different gospel than what he and the other apostles had preached, already preached unto them, let them be accursed. So, by gathering all Israel back from the four winds, from north, south, east, and west, 
This is how Jehovah, the Holy One of Israel, is going to exalt himself, make himself holy in the eyes of the Gentiles, and in the eyes of all Israel. That's it. That is the God. That is the new covenant. And there are more. I just showed you a few of the scriptures in the prophets. Don't let anyone tell you any differently. Because anyone who tells you any differently has put themselves under a curse. And I will end this with Romans 11, starting in verse 25. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this secret. What? What? The secret of Jehovah, the mystery, the mystery that John was talking about in Revelation 10, verse 7. The mystery, the secret that David was talking about in the book of Psalm. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery. Because to be ignorant of that mystery is a curse. So I say to you, those who are listening to my YouTube channel, brethren, I would not that you be ignorant of this mystery. I agree with Paul. I agree completely with Paul in this matter here. Lest you should be wise in your own conceits. Because blindness happened in part to, to Israel until the time of the Gentiles come to an end. Verse 26, And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, yes, they shall be saved, they shall be gathered from the north, south, east, and the west, the angels will gather them from one end of the sky unto the other. As it is written, and in this way, there shall come out of Zion the Deliverer. Wait a minute now. But, but you Christians say he's already come. That means he's going to come again. So when he comes again, this is when it's going to happen. Folks, you can't get around the truth here. This is how Israel is going to be saved. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Verse 27, for this is my covenant, my new covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. So all Israel will be able to wash themselves in the blood of the Lamb when that day comes. And he says, as concerning the gospel, they are currently enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election... He shall gather the elect from north, south, east, and west, from one end of the sky to the other. As concerning the election, they are the beloved for the patriarch's sakes. So they are the elect. Because the gifts and the calling of Jehovah cannot be changed, that means the words of the prophets cannot be altered Verse 30, 
For you Gentiles in times past never believed Jehovah, yet now you've... Ab he says now. Did he say in the time of the end? No, he says now, at that particular point in time. But now you have been obtained mercy because of their unbelief. Even so, have these also now not believed that through your mercy or through the mercy that you may re that you have received, through that same mercy that you the Gentile received in those days, they shall receive in the future. For Jehovah has concluded all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all. So I tell you, Gentiles, who choose to go after a twisted, perverted gospel, Paul put a curse upon all. Who does that? Walk away from that curse. Write down all the passages I quoted to you today. Read them, learn them, understand them, and believe them. I don't care who you are, whether you're a Gentile or whether you are an Israelite. You believe that, you have the secret of Jehovah. That is the secret. That is the mystery. 